when that foul got called at the end of Creighton San Diego State, oh, I immediately it felt thought of the Super Bowl. Like the Super Bowl again, didn't it? That was a foul though. His right arm Well, he just had his hand on his hip. I mean, he pushed him. Did he? Yeah. He did. The game's he tied. Him. He's in midair and he pushed him. But the like, game's tied. And also So what? It, it, you, overtime. <laughs> so uh, what? I know. I it's just it's just not. If you would have called that foul on the playground playing pickup, you would have gotten laughed off the court. There are far worse instances of bad foul calls than this one. The man's arm was on him. He pushed him. I thought it was a good call. Yeah, Ryan Nemhard's right arm was on the hip of Darian Trammell as he was heading towards the basket and was just a, just about to launch the shot. Whistles blown. and At least it was by an official who had a perfect view of it. The official was in position, and the official made the call, and I wish the official hadn't again. And I, I, it's such a tough position for the official to be in, of course, but for somebody who who comments on this sort of stuff, you got to play better than the ref's ref, but the ref, I think, made the proper call. The question is, once again, should the official make it? Once again, and in a, a an intense battle in a do or die contest for both teams. Now this is not the Super Bowl. This this, I mean you can't even. I mean a national championship game is the is, is the, is the equivalent. Final four is a big deal. Uh, certainly for Creighton and San Diego State. Yeah, two teams not even supposed to be there. I just wish we hadn't seen it. And then the and then the 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 end, where the full court pass goes off the hands of, <laughs> it seems, both players, one from each side, yeah. and then hits the ground, game over. No, let's take a look at it again. Right, that was. And then once you're in replay, everything's reviewable. And so did the inbounds thrower, can't call him a passer, um, step, step on, on the, the line, line <laughs> and then and then if it it, it, it it's so weird. Like, why are we built? Because you're building courts out of whole cloth, right? Why are we building a court where the end line is separated from the out of bounds, you know, area, same color by a swath of hard court? Right. Like, just make it one whole color. <laughs> like, yeah. what are we doing here? Right. Like, why are we getting all, you know, artsy? <laughs> right uh, so that's what i'm thinking while yeah, i'm watching right. this it is a thin like, line let's, man let's make it all one friggin well, color it's, it's like an outline it's just like the whole court what is are we outlined doing? in wood like the black oh, yeah yeah like if somebody showed me those designs i'd be like make it all one color what are we doing at any rate of course that comes into play and then the ball goes off of who we don't know who can't because tell. that's crucial because if there's time left on the clock yeah, they have time for a tip in. Who knows? You know, who knows? Right. So, so again, if the inbounds thrower had stepped on the end line, then it would be 1.2 seconds left with San Diego State having to inbounds from underneath their own basket, correct? Right. That didn't happen. Did not happen. Then if the ball did bounce out of bounds off of San Diego State, then Creighton would be inbounds – Inbounding under their own basket with whatever they determined yeah, was left like on the clock. Two or something. Right? Yeah. So for them to come out of that long, <laughs> that very long look see <laughs> and basically say, it's over. <laughs> Game over. <laughs> and, and then here, Ian Eagle, who's so good. By the way, this is the last time that the, the Elite Eight will be his final game call, uh, calling a game because, as you know, he's taking over for Nance. Yep. Um, he goes, they brushed, they broke out a stopwatch. I know. And I'm like, hold on a second. Wait a minute. So they determined it didn't matter who the ball was off of, that the process of the ball hitting a human hand, popping up in the air and landing down on the ground was longer than the 1.2 seconds that was left on the clock that apparently didn't start on time. Once the ball hit the hand, so they determined by hand time yeah, the stopwatch. <laughs> yeah. that it was longer than the 1.2 seconds, so that's why they decided to end the game. And my question is, how? If we are 
saying call a foul if it's a foul right. no matter when. No matter what. Okay? No matter what the circumstance is and no matter when, call it. But when it comes down to the last 1.2 seconds, we're going to stop watch this thing? So why don't we stop watch everything? You see what I'm saying? A foul is a foul no matter when. Then the official clock isn't the official clock until the very end, and then we're going to stop watch it? Because if the clock didn't start by the time that the ball hit the hand, that's the circumstance that we've played the first, what, 39 minutes and 58.8 seconds? By the way, did I do that math right? Because if I did, holy cow, I am growing as a human. (laughs) So then, you know what I'm saying? Like that, running the clock by having a human being hit the button for the clock that we're seeing on CBS and in the arena, that works for the first, I'm not going to do it again, am I? 39 minutes and 58.8 seconds. But then when it comes down to it, we'll bust out the stopwatch. Now it's different. Last 1.2 seconds is different. Then why are we calling a foul? Because it is different. Clock's different. How we're handling the clock's different. But how we're handling the officiating is the same. Hmm. See what I'm saying? It doesn't square to me. I don't love it. I don't love it either. I don't love it. But the other thing I thought of was this, because, you know, I'm a Michigan guy. Seeing this kid, uh, what is it? Is it Trammell or, or Trammell? I'm sorry. But seeing this kid on the line with no time left in a foul that's very controversial, taking free throws, reminded me, of course, oh, sure. of yeah. Ramil Robinson. Yeah. Do you know who was on the bench when Ramil was taking those shots? The head coach of San Diego State University, Brian Dutcher, who was the assistant of Steve Fisher in that magical run. Oh, wow. Who probably would have been shown the gate like Fisher had they not gone on that magical run and Fisher and Dutcher were definitely not on the bench for the Fab Five and definitely weren't winning all those games at Michigan to land in San Diego State together where he's now taking San Diego State to the Final Four to build off of the terrific job Steve Fisher did when he got the gig there. Were you hoping he'd miss the second one? I kind of was. Well, because I wanted to see overtime. Yeah, I wanted to see overtime. But that's just me as a fan, and that's where we come right. from when we say don't call it. Yeah, it's more fan stuff. But yeah. Don't call it. Don't call that foul. We want to see overtime. We don't want to be robbed of this. Right. And we don't want to have the first 39 minutes and 58.8 seconds on it today. be for all coming to this point. For this unsatisfying finish, it is similar to Scatman Crothers coming all the way from South Florida just to save Danny at the Overlook Hotel, only to take an axe to the chest. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Geez. Sorry, I just went down a shining wormhole out of nowhere. <laughs> I just pulled a red rum on everybody who has not seen the film. But you know what? Too late. They've had time. You've had time. <laughs> Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 